Yeah, so it's been a it's been a good week of practice. Um, you know, we've had to really turn up the intensity. Obviously, disappointed uh, how the last two games have gone, especially on offense and how we performed. Uh, so we know we got to get better and work on the details of everything that we're doing. And then uh, playing a defense like U or, uh, ECU, uh, extremely aggressive. Uh, they're gonna they're gonna pressure you about 75% of the game and and heat you up, and that's what they do. Uh, so it's really important that. Uh, we're really good communication-wise uh, up front with our offensive line, running backs and tight ends communicating on pressures, and quarterbacks make sure they're identifying their hots and everything that they do. And we got to uh, you know, know our tips and tells and, and be ready to anticipate what pressures are coming. So it's a lot of uh, different offensive line lineups uh, yeah. these past three games. What is it like trying to have them all adjust with each other, trying to get them on the same page, and then trying to get them on the same page with all four quarterbacks? Right. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we're, we're, we're certainly looking for a little bit more stability as we go into this game plan and everything we do and try, try to nail down who we're going to play. But at the same time, you know, we're going to rotate uh, some guys in, uh, you know, up front to make sure that, that we stay fresh and, and do all that. But uh, the biggest thing is this week in practice, making sure we rep those guys to the places that they're going to play in the games um, and, and really make sure we're all 100% on the same page in what we're doing. Yeah, I mean, they just do a really good job of bringing pressure from all areas of the field. So it's not like, you know, you're just getting pressure to the field or it's not just exterior pressure or just interior pressure. There's edge pressure, there's interior pressure, there's corner cats, there's free safeties. They're bringing two off the edge from the field, two off the edge from the boundary. Uh, so they just do a really good job of bringing pressure uh, from all different locations. Uh, and they do a good job of, of doing that versus all the different formations uh, that you can do out there. So we got to do a really good job of, of seeing our, our keys in the back end and, and making sure we're looking uh, for what we need to make sure we get us into the right protections. Yeah. 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 No, we we really uh, like the way that Chris has developed. Uh, you know, he did a really good job on the one uh, flat pass he caught. I think it was on a third and three, and, and did it. Obviously, you know, wanted to get that fourth down, but uh, he just wasn't able to. Uh, but Chris has done a really good job uh, protecting, blocking, pass catching. Uh, he's definitely a guy in the future. Uh, that, that we think is going to be a really, really good player. So it's good right now with him behind Mitch uh, to get some of that game experience and continue to develop. Johnny broke off a couple huge games in your first two games. He, he did most of his work on special teams last week. But yep. How nice was it just to see him continue making those big plays like that? Yeah, Johnny, Johnny's a guy is, is a reflection of how he practices. You know, he does a great job. Uh, every week in practice and finishing uh, and how it does. And, you know, he's one of those guys that, hey, it shows up on game day. You know, how you practice is how you play. Uh, so I think it's a good example uh, to the rest of our players. If you're going to be a playmaker, that's how you got to practice. Coach Scott said that there was a difficulty with uh, pass protection from running backs this past week. What is that going to be like coming this week when there's going to be a lot of pressure? Yeah, there's going to be tons of pressure. Uh, so it's a couple things. You know, number one, it's challenging those running backs to put themselves in better position. You know, they're trying to cut in, in a place where they shouldn't be cutting uh, when a guy's playing high and, and knowing some of that. So they've definitely gone to work in protection this week. And then it's also schematically maybe finding a few ways uh, to, to utilize maybe our tight ends and in protection instead of the backs uh, and kind of switch their uh, responsibilities and doing some scheme things. But also at the same time, we got to challenge them. Hey, you're running back. you got to protect uh, when the time comes. Uh, so they got to do a much better job with that. Yeah, you know, we, we got uh, Leo Parker in at the end of the game, and uh, he did some good things uh, protection-wise. So he's certainly a guy that, that we hope moving forward can continue to, to improve and get better. So he's somebody that we can put in maybe in some of those passing situations to have a bigger body. Uh, and then, you know, as you saw, we, we got to use our backs uh, in, in places that help them, you know, and free releasing them and letting them run angle routes like Johnny caught uh, one uh, in the game and, and do some things like that uh, so we can help those guys out as well. I do. I, I do think that, uh, you know, offensively, you know, we, we had a meeting and let them know that, hey, you know, we're not playing to our standard and we got to get things going uh, in the right direction. And I think they've really taken that to heart and gone to work this week and uh, really put it on their shoulders that uh, we got to improve, especially, you know, at some of those certain positions at quarterback uh, and at wide receiver. There's no sign of Noah Johnson last week. Is there any chance he comes on the field this week? Yeah, Noah's been doing a good job. So, um, you know, 
uh, how it works is, you know, different people get their opportunities at different times. And so my message to the QBs is always just work on being the best version of yourself. Uh, and I thought Noah's had a good week of practice this week. Uh, so he continues to improve. And, uh, you know, at some point, you know, he'll get his opportunities. Uh, yeah, it was great having Brad back. I thought he did a, he, he did a really good job. Uh, obviously, it wasn't perfect first game back uh, and some, some little things fundamentally, but uh, he did a really good job of, uh, you know, with the protection stuff and communicating uh, and getting us into the right looks. And, you know, just sometimes we didn't do a good job physically uh, with the protection in certain areas. But I thought Brad did a really good job. Uh, it's just great having him back uh, from a leadership standpoint as well uh, and bringing guys along with him. Right. Yeah. So what have those guys been doing to stay more disciplined? Uh, you know, we, we had some major issues with pre-snap penalties in our first scrimmage uh, of fall camp, and so I really think it was at that point um, that we really made an emphasis of this is something that we got to work on every single day. And so you know, throughout fall camp, it was uh, you know we're doing up downs and different deals for every time that they fall start, uh, do something wrong. And so really just emphasize that to those guys throughout. And we really continue to do that uh, to this day because uh, we can't afford to, to do things like that and to make those mistakes uh, with the position we're at right now. So we got to keep getting better. Um, but no, that's definitely been one bright spot. Is it encouraging when you look at the box score and there's only three penalties? It definitely is. You know, it's you obviously would like better results, you know, right. more scoring more than seven points. But uh, no, there you got to Look at all things, and that, that's certainly a positive. Um, we got to continue to make that a positive for ourselves and improve in those other areas. Charlie, a couple of readers have asked me about Jordan Smith. Is he just maybe not as up to speed as those other guys at this point? Yeah, Jordan. Jordan's going to be a really good player in the future. Um, you know, he, he's still developing uh, in the passing game and doing some things and continuing to learn the playbook uh, in some of those areas. Um, so. He, he's not quite ready yet, um, but we definitely think that he's going to be a guy uh, that can be a really good player in the future. Uh, but just right now, he's a little bit behind some of those other guys. Uh, but he's had a great attitude, continue to improve. He does a great job on the scout team uh, in giving those guys a look. So really proud of him and how he's fared. You know, sometimes it's tough. You're a freshman coming in. You're a big guy on campus. And hey, now, you know, you're fourth, fifth quarterback on the roster. But uh, you wouldn't know that from, from how he practices and how he prepares. For sure. You know, did you expect um, to maybe see him jump right into the fold like he did? No, I, I wouldn't think so. You know, when he first got here, honestly, he was a little bit behind. Um, but he's really just as practice has progressed, you know, we've seen his arm talent and uh, how special that really is. Um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get to show it on Saturday in the way that we'd want to. But um, he definitely has the ability going forward. And uh, we, we saw that and recognized it. And then, um, you know, as he started to, you know, come back in, into the fold when Cade was unavailable, um, you know, kind of taking that third string role, he did a really good job and practiced well and was preparing well. And so uh, he continued to get better and better. Uh, and we know with his potential down the future that he could be a really good player uh, based on his arm talent. And he's a guy that played in, in an absolute gauntlet in last year with Miami Central win the state title. You know, does that experience playing big ball games help him at the collegiate level? Yeah, I don't think – you know, even though, you know, he had three interceptions on Saturday, I don't think it phases him, you know, playing playing a great team like Cincinnati. Uh, so that's definitely one of his strong points is, you know, he's playing at Miami Central, winning a state championship. Uh, he kind of knows what it takes uh, and playing great competition. And so uh, that definitely helps him because, uh, you know, he's not a guy that's going to back down or, you know, be concerned with some of that. Takeaways were good. You know, we, we hit our goal and um, more than the takeaways, uh, I was proud of how we responded after some sudden change situations that we were in, you know, responding with, uh, you know, uh, I guess there were five opportunities and uh, zero points off turnovers, which is, uh, I hadn't ever been around that before, so that was nice. But on the flip side, uh, all I think about is those uh, three scores, right? One being a, you know, 50-50 ball that is just a great throw and catch. But the other being an alignment error, uh, didn't have an edge on the defense, which uh, means we didn't coach that young man good enough. Another one was a, a goal line dump pass with a push off on, a, on one of our guys. He's got to play better technique and he's got to 
got to be more aggressive on that. So our job is to hold them to uh, less points than we score, right? So we uh, we failed uh, miserably in that uh, case. Of course, uh, a, a smaller defensive line than what we've usually seen. What, what is it like trying to coach them up in like to a different style rather than just that like big boys, big pressure? Well, I mean, it's just a. It's a misnomer, you know. I, I really don't want just a bunch of uh, big bodies out there. Uh, you know, to play proper technique, you got to play with low pad and leverage. And some of the best players I've ever coached were, you know, six two or under. They could not only hold point, but they uh, they had great leverage and, and they had the feet to separate off blocks. So, I mean, I I don't know what other people want, but I want guys that uh, can snatch off blocks and run run things down the defensive line. Obviously, I'm not saying we want small guys, right? It's, it's just got to be a good balance. So for the most part, our guys are doing that. Uh, but plenty of instances uh, on Saturday where they, they could do better and they get locked on blocks. Your possession receiver, uh, I think control, I think he's number 11. What are your thoughts on him? A lot like his dad. Y'all don't remember him probably, do you? Wake Forest, right? I think so. Yeah, I was at Georgia Tech at the time, but uh, yeah, very similar. Just um, great, great shake, great awareness. Uh, you know, if you watch them, what, what they do great is is that the quarterback creates plays. You know, he reminds me of a uh, of uh, the way uh, Baker was uh, in the Big Twelve. The initial play, of course, he can do that. He's got a, a great arm and touch, but he is most dangerous when that second play is occurring within that play. And Cole and those receivers know that, so they know, you know, where to go. They know to find the open space because when he's running around, they say, "All right, it's about to happen." And if I'm one of those in the route, I better be ready because that ball could come to either one of us. People that know how to move the ball, it's like him. You know, it's like. I've said it before, he's that quarterback's the guy that on Saturdays down at the park you're picking him first. You know, he's just he's that kind of that kind of competitor and playmaker. How impressed have you been with Mac Harris, the young guy that really stepped up and, and also transitioned to the linebacker? Uh got a long ways to go, you know. Uh and and I'll tell him that. So I'm not telling him anything to but I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He's getting a great opportunity to get better. And his best days are ahead of him, but he can't make some of the mistakes uh, that he made Saturday. Uh, he's not a freshman anymore, so I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear about young Mac Harris. You know, those days are way gone. Uh, but old Glenn Spencer could have made some better calls on Saturday too. So. Would you a Van Halen guy coming? Yeah, sad week, huh? Yeah. So when I was at Georgia Tech, I got to work um, one of my part-time jobs there. We didn't have this cost of attendance money back then, so for my gas money and pizza money, so I worked security at the uh, at the Omni, the old Omni in Atlanta. So I got to see every every act that came through town, front row, backstage, and those guys were the best. And uh, yeah. You know, of course, big parties, big fun. But uh, Eddie just taking his time out to say, hey, how you doing? You a ball player? Something like that. It's pretty neat. So there's my, there's my Van Halen story for the week. That's gold. All right. Obviously, uh, you know, East Carolina didn't score an offensive touchdown last week against Georgia State, but they still put 29 points on the board, put together some, you know, good offensive. Is it tough kind of evaluating them on film when they didn't necessarily execute on offense last week, or is it kind of just another week? No, they, uh, you know, they have some, some base runs they're good at that they move the ball. And, you know, what happens in a game like that, if you give, get up on somebody, all of a sudden they, you know, they have to kind of go to a different style to try to win the game. And then, you know, then it takes them out of their balanced stuff that they do. But you see them, you know, you evaluate an opponent you know, you do it by cut-ups. So 
course, I'll go back and watch a, a TV copy just to feel the game, the tempo and stuff, cadences, whatever. But majority of your study is these are their favorites. These are how they execute their favorites. This is what we have to do to stop their favorites. Uh, did I even answer your question? I don't know. Uh, uh, <laughs> it was a weird question. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, it's not hard. It's not hard to see them at what they do good. Yeah. You know, that's you just you turn on the course of last year and the games this year, and you see plenty of good to say, geez, these guys are pretty explosive. Although it's a, a, a different scheme from last year, you know, are you looking at that game back in Greenville to see kind of how your personnel uh, did in that game? Uh, not not a whole lot, not a whole lot. Just because it's schematically you have so much to work on during the week, but uh, obviously I did did look at it just for matchups. But as far as the study about you know two different teams, two different years, and of course us with with different uh, different schemes. All right, guys. Thank y'all. Thanks, Glenn.